If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open. Cause this day's for you Don't you let this opportunity pass by you yeah. oh, Change your mind Amen, somebody. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time of impartation. I thank you for this word, this addition to this, 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 these tablets that you are writing on our heart. Holy Spirit, call forth the angels to silence the demonic chatter. You are the Lord of hosts. You control the arms. You do battle over our heads so that we may hear you unobstructed, hear you clearly. We prepare our hearts. We open our hearts to hear, to receive, to be changed by this word. Thank you, Master, for all that's going on that we can't even see just so that we might have life and life more abundantly. Today, Lord, we declare we remove the might and we will have life and life more abundantly. All those in agreement with us said amen. Amen. And amen. Huh. I'm going to let you sit down this time. Go ahead and put, that, put the scripture up for me. Okay, that was me talking. Holy Spirit said, stand up. Come on. Honor the word. Mark 10, verses 46 through 52. Yes, sir. Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me, on, my, on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him here. Somebody say he called him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, stand up. He is calling for you. There's so much I could have preached in that thing right there. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And answering him, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni, I want to regain my sight. Can I have my vision again? Hmm. And Jesus said, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight. Somebody said he got his vision again and began following him on the road. You may be seated. Oh, I don't want to sit down. This sermon in this series is entitled, Why Does Purpose even matter? Why does it even matter? It'll make your job easy today, Olivia. You don't have to chase me around with that camera. Huh? Uh, let me, I might have spoke too soon. Somebody do me a favor to see the sign above my head, the banner above my head. Somebody yell out what that says. What's, what's the first word? The second one. And the third righteousness recompense covenant the one that we really want to get to I know recompense and I get that recompense is compensation compensation uh, for services rendered it's a blessing we're having to pull out chairs compensation for services rendered Let's stop and praise God for that for just a second. Hallelujah. Give God a praise offering. Give God a praise offering for that. Let's go. See, see, I don't know about you.
about y'all, but here's what I've learned. What I praise him for, he gives me more. Whatever I praise him for, he decides I must like that. And so he gives me more. I can't be cute when he blesses. Mark, am I making sense? Y'all better praise him for the stuff you want. All right. Back to this. I feel a wild man in me today. I'm sorry. I do. I'm trying to get myself together. Come on, Brian and Travis. Ah. All right. I got to teach this, but I'm excited about the Lord today. I am. I, I'm, I, I, I have an anticipation. I have an anticipation. Something good. It's something. <laughs> I'm like a little kid on Christmas Eve. Something good. Ha. All right. Let me let me let me act right. We got guests and stuff. They like. I want to. We want to get to recompense, and we absolutely want to live in this covenant. Recompense is what God has promised to give you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, God, I thank you in advance. Praise him for that. Praise him for that real quick. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Covenant, as I told you the other week, God is saying, we passed this whole season thing. I want to do this forever. I want to do this forever. Somebody will tell God, thank you for that. But the thing I got to get you to see, and I begin to understand now while we're in this series, is that that first one, I got to give to God. The re listen, the releasing of the recompense is contingent upon me giving him that first thing. Righteousness. We're going to get into this message, but I need you to understand this. When I took you to that scripture in Isaiah, it didn't say, remember, it didn't say righteousness. Anybody remember what it said? Divine justice. And I translate it as righteousness. Let me tell you why. Because, talk to me for a second. When, when, when I say God is just, what am I saying about it? Thank you, Kim. God is fair. Fair means I get what I, I deserve. Please understand this. Heaven has what you deserve, but is waiting on whose name is on it. The person you made, heaven doesn't recognize. You know, we got all this technology now that recognizes you by your face and stuff, and it won't open up unless it's you. There is a description of the real you in heaven. And so God says, I want to be just with you. But you're not who you ought to be. Righteousness is who, what? Who I ought to be. All that God has that he wants to give me. Thank you, Lord. Entrust with me. Because he does not trust my pseudo personality. Matter of fact, you don't trust your pseudo personality because many of the reasons why you have turned down opportunities is because you don't trust. You've had seasons of open doors that you didn't walk through because you did not trust. Because there's a knowing on the inside that keeps saying this ain't. So we got to deal with this, who am I? Because if I show up, then heaven recognizes me. Am I making sense? Watch this. There is, there is this, 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 
insidious pain that gradually grows in all of us the older we get. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a pain that quietly but effectively controls the direction and the trajectory of our lives. I need you to understand this. It's, 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 it's a pain that Christ is obsessed with curing. But it's also a pain that Satan is obsessed with normalizing. Satan needs you to believe that this pain is normal. And it's easy to believe that it's normal because there are so many of us in the same pain. When it's a whole bunch of us in the same state, it begins to look, oh, y'all so smart. So what is this pain, Pastor? It is the pain of lost identity. The pain of lost purpose. And if you, if you, right now some of you ought to be like, man, I've been normalizing that my whole life. I feel it. Here I am, 30, 40, 50, 60. I still have no clue. And for you to just keep going, you've been making it like normal. Christ is obsessed with curing that. The enemy needs you to rest in it. We're in pain. It's amazing how the human mind functions and the body functions. If you're in pain long enough, you'll forget you're hurting. Yeah. Have, have, have you ever been going through something and, and you and, and you you mess around and have a chance to, to get some work done, get get an operation or something, and now you're living without it? And you didn't realize what life was without it? Because you have some coping mechanisms that, that, that you know, even though we were de designed to be conquerors, we excel in coping. Y'all hear that? Designed to destroy stuff that's out of order. But we have mastered coping. I'm just going to act blessed and highly favored. I'm going to make everything prophetic. I'm going to make everything in the in in the, in the, in the, in the in the in the in the in the in the yonder days so that I can cope with my now. God's getting ready to do it. No, God's done it. You just keep missing it. Why do I keep missing it? Satan wants this pain to be normal. And see, remember I told you this. Listen, uh, 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 our response, our natural reaction to pain is not for us to go seek out a cure. Our natural reaction to pain is to try to mitigate it or compensate ourselves through pleasure. We don't try to fix what's broken. We try to go find something to help us forget that it's broken. Am I right about it? Come on, y'all talk to me. Don't act like we all innocent. We all got some broken places that we're trying to self-medicate some way, somehow. And so we, we, we try to find some pleasure to compensate for what's going on. And listen, and so this sinful tendency that we all have, not just your neighbor, you too, the sinful tendency that we all have makes us a prime candidate for the enemy. Because his answer to your pain is pleasure. And so he offers you all kinds of ways to forget about it, if only for one night. To forget about it just, just, just for the weekend. I'll deal with it on Monday. But this weekend, got plans. <laughs> oh, I'm in people's business right now. <laughs> I'm one of you. So he wants to get you chasing 
fleeting feelings of pleasure. But Jesus' approach is different. Watch this. It's different, but less appealing. Because Jesus wants to offer you a cure. But in order for me to be cured, I got to confront. By the time the Lord asked me to confront, I'm already tired. If somebody agrees, just, 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 you know, if you can't say amen, just give me a head check. Mm-hmm. I'm already tired. I don't, I don't, I don't want to confront myself because, because for me to heal, you know, I, I know we want to, we, because we, we, we in this day and age, we want to quit, we want to quit. God said, before I can heal, I got to show it to you. God, I don't want to see it. Just take it away. I got to, I got to show you the damage that it's done. Not just to you, but I want to show you the damage that is done to others because I got to remind you that this is a us thing. This ain't just about you. So I can't just show you the ugliness that's in you. I want to show you the ugliness you spread. So that when you get to the place where you're ready to let yourself off the hook, you won't forget that it's also touching other people's lives too. Because sometimes we don't love ourselves enough to get healthy. Sometimes God has to show us some people that we do love that we're damaging. Sometimes enough, your own wellness is not enough. That's why we still can't love people because I can't love my neighbor until I first love myself. But I'm so busy trying to take care of everybody else, I don't have any love in me to give to you. So God got us figured out. So he says, listen, I will help you get through this if you're willing to deal with yourself. So, but here's the diagnosis for many of us. Instead of confronting the pain in our own, the pain of a loss of purpose, many times we can find ourselves spending a lifetime trying to find pleasure to help us forget just how lost we are. Hmm. We spent a whole life. Anybody got some years behind you where you go like, good grief. Man, what was I doing over there? What was I doing with you? (laughs) How much money did I waste? How much time I can't get back? My credit's still jacked up. And you still driving what my name is on. Oh, that's an Old Testament. Okay. Because I didn't want to deal with me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Move on. So listen, listen, listen. This, when you, when you dig a little deeper in the story, because I know all, who, who all have heard the story about the mayors before? Y'all, y'all have heard the story about the blind man. Do you do know there are so many levels, layers to scripture that you can you can never hit bottom. So there's always something else to discover about a text, which which ought to make reading the Bible fascinating. This what I just described to you is actually one of the many stories in the backdrop of Bartimaeus' life. Watch, 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 watch this. Listen. Mm. My glasses are foggy from worshiping. Bartimaeus. We have a blind man. Somebody say blind. We have a blind man with no vision. This is both natural blindness and also spiritual blindness. I bet some of y'all can already go to where I'm going because you're like, that's me. Good Lord, I don't found me in the text again. The Bible warns us that without vision, what were we suspect of doing? Anybody know? 
says that we cast off restraint. If, if we don't have a vision, because it's, 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 it's not your willpower. Did you hear me? You can't just oh, to make yourself act right. And see, some of y'all are so mad at yourself because you've been mm, all your life and still find yourself somewhere you got no business being. Am I right about it? Oh, we're going to be honest today. So what is it that keeps me from acting up? Without a vision, you will cast off. Can y'all picture that? What, what does cast off look like? No, no, no. Y'all did that too cute. Y'all, y'all act like y'all taking off an expensive coat. Cast off is a picture of frustration. Where whatever's holding you, take it and you throw it. How many times did you get in trouble because you got tired of having standards? And you didn't just ease off them. You threw them off. Because you told yourself, watch this, watch this lie. I deserve And so cast off restraint means I'm subject with my holy self of doing whatever I can find to bring me pleasure. Are y'all with me so far? Anybody willing to say that was me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so because Bartimaeus he lacked vision. Somebody say lack vision. And he lacked restraint. He was subject to two consequences. That first consequence was this. He did not have identity. And the second is he was reduced to begging. I think I might have been giving that to you, Tina, as a slide. He, he did not have what? And so he was therefore reduced to beggary. Begging. Some of y'all might push back, like, wait a minute, Pastor. We he had identity. We know, we know what his name is. His name is Bartimaeus, right? That ain't his name. The word Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. We don't even know his name. See, when we was, y'all remember back, you know, when we was introduced to Simon? He was Simon Barjona. Simon, the son of. When you see that bar put in front of a name, that means son of. Remember that as you're reading your Bible. Simon, the son of Jonah. We knew his name. But here we have this man on the side of the road. He is only known by his daddy. He's only known by the legacy of his father. Only known by where he came from. Timaeus means unclean. So at some point, his daddy did something that disassociated him with the community. He did something that was beneath their standards, something that made them oppose him, something that made him untouchable, something that he knew better, but he did it anyway. And now he has been labeled. Not only was he labeled his offspring. And so he don't even have a name. That's, 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 that's so-and-so child. I'm known more so for where I came from. Instead of where I'm going to. Catch that. God wants you to be known for where you're going. Miss Betty, that's why he gives you vision. Vision says, I know where I'm going. God can't deliver someone who's stuck in where they came from. So to get me out of 
the traps and the bondages of my bloodline, the traps and the bondages of my community, the traps and the bondages of my household, the traps and bondages of my nation, wherever, whatever I've been associated with that seems to be bigger than my individuality. God said, here's vision. Because if I don't give you vision, you're going to just do what they did. That's why you don't look unique now. You look the same. And so if you're the same, what's the point of knowing your name? You just wanted. Are y'all hearing me? And so that's 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 been that that's been been that 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 inner pain, Travis. That's that loss of identity because there's something in you like I just want somebody to know me, but I can't introduce them to me because I don't know. And so I've been spending my whole life reacting to whatever came up, and I became whatever they needed me to be so I can have some association with the people because I didn't want to be by myself. So I've been changing every day, every week, every year of my life, keep trying on new personalities and new identities to see which one fits me best or which one gives me the best reaction. And here I am. I don't know my name either. Like that girl in coming to America. What do you like? Whatever you like. We laughed at it then, but now, how many times you gave up a whatever when you should have had clarity? Because clarity would have let you walk away from some things. Instead of getting sucked into something that added another layer to your life that you're now hoping God helps you peel away. Why does this stuff even matter? And see, and when you sit down and wonder. And when you don't know who you are or why you exist, you aren't able. Listen. Please hear this part. If you don't know who you are and why you exist, because you, you, you exist for a reason. It wasn't just because your daddy thought your mama was cute. Your, your mama and daddy created what you look like on the outside. God decided who you were on the inside. Your mom and daddy prepared a body. God prepared a personality, a person. Are y'all hearing me? If you don't know who you are and why you exist, here it is, then you won't be able to discover your now. And I know everybody, we, we, we got this wonderful thing that, that truthfully, that's going on right now with, that's such, with such good intentions, but what it's really doing is, is, is frustrating y'all some more. We got this thing where everybody on social media trying to boost you up and tell you you, you deserve everything you want to have. And Hello, king. Hello, queen. I understand the intention behind that. But if you don't have a kingdom, you ain't a queen or a king. If you don't have something to rule over, they're just teaching you how to perform more. And see, here's what happens when you perform. You start issuing out false advertising. And what false advertising does, it attracts. It draws people. But it draws people who have expectations. So folks show up expecting you to be able to deliver. And then when folks expect you to deliver, now you're mad saying folk judging you. Now you're mad saying folk asking too much of you. No, that, that's what you put on the sign. The sign said that you make all of this. You deliver all of this. No, I was just trying to be a king or a queen. No, you false advertising. But you can be that if you go through the development process. Am, am, I, am, I, am I right? Some of y'all look offended at me. That means I'm preaching good. Okay. And so, guess what? If you don't know your value, if you don't know what you're worth, the consequence of that is you're reduced to beggary.
I don't know what I'm worth, so I can't demand it. And so I'm hoping to just appeal to the mercies of people. Son of David, have mercy on me. And see, if you know your Bible, you know God don't even talk like that. God's like, ask me for what's yours. He's saying, have mercy because I don't know. Give me whatever you're willing to give me. I'll take whatever you offer. A little piece of a man is better than just just give me what you have. <laughs> Wait, some of y'all looking at me. Hey, Kenny, come closer, man, just in case somebody rush me in a minute. But I told you, Kenny, if they rush me and I'm winning, leave me alone. I told Ken I got some pressure. I need some frustration. I need to get out. But if they win it, you better come get them off me. If I don't know my worth, if I don't know my worth, if I don't know my worth, I'm reduced to beggary. <laughs> and see, sometimes we can, sometimes I watch us sometimes confuse favor. We, we call beggary favor. Because we don't understand favor. Be like, you know, I ain't got to do nothing. I got the favor of the Lord upon me. And people are just going to pour into my bosom. No. No. Because the people that you hope and bless you, God loved them too. And so the way, here's how favor really works. God, God shines a light on your development. That, was that too deep? God, God knows how you've been working secretly. God knows how you've been studying secretly. God knows how you've been developing skill sets secretly. And then he finds somebody to say, hey, go, 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 go check out her. That's the favor of God. Because listen, you have been developing the solution that's in you. And he finds another son and daughter that has the problem that he's trying to bless them. So he makes the connection between the two. And so everybody comes out of it blessed. See, what we want is for God just to take stuff from folk. You don't care how he leaves them as long as you walk out blessed. See, that's why when we even hear the scripture, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for who? The righteous. And so you like, God, take it from him, take it from him, take it from him. And give him to us. You can make folk run around the church by telling them God's getting ready to take it from the wicked. And give it to us for us to mismanage. Instead of having the heart of God that says, point me to the wicked. I'll minister to him so he'll become righteous. And the blessing that he now possess doesn't even have to change hands. Help me change a mind. And see, watch this. Here's, here's how God blesses on the backside of that. He said, once you do that part, if you're kingdom minded, then I will tell them. And, the, and men shall give into your bosom. Press down, shaking together. He said, give, right? That men will give. He didn't say, I'm going to take it from them. They'll give. Why? Because I was a solution. You give your resources to people who solve your problems. You leave here, you're hungry. You're going to go do what, right? Get something to eat. Before you walk away with that food, what you got to do? Unless you can run real fast. What you got to do? Pay for it. You give your resources because they solve the problem. God has been trying to give you a vision because you are a walking solution. But if you don't do this, you don't know your identity. You don't know your value. You're reduced to beggary. Which goes against the will of God. Let me prove it to you scripturally. Psalms 37, 25. Hit me with that, Tina. This is David talking. Y'all heard David say this, right? What did he say? Y'all can quote this. I have been young, and now I'm old. And I have what? The righteous. Watch this. Or... David said, I've been around this thing for a long time, Kenan. 
I done seen a lot of stuff. I was a whole bunch of stuff that I thought was true that ended up not being true. I saw a whole bunch of stuff that was wrong that ended up being right. But one of the patterns that I've watched throughout my entire life is that if somebody messes around and knows who they ought to be, I have never seen that person forsaken by God. I've watched God walk away from folk who lose their identity. Because I can't bless you when you're misplaced. Uh, that's, why, that's why he wouldn't let Adam back in the garden. He said, because he said, we, we, we got we to we keep him out of the garden because he's messed up. And if, if he stays in and eats from the tree of life, he's going to think he's all right. I need him to know he ain't right. So God would do things just so that you know I'm not in the right. Are y'all listening? You asking God to bless you, God says, who? I don't recognize this number. Who is this? Are y'all listening? But also, I've never seen his seed, his descendants. So, God, you mean if I get it right? Trying to say in the marriage, get it right. Mook will grow up in a house where identity is everything. You ain't got to get to middle school and try and try on personalities like we did. You know who you are from day one. And so because she knows who she is, she knows her value. And she'll never be put in a position of begging. Because if I know what I'm worth and I know where what I'm good at, I also know where I fit. Am I making sense? I'm trying, Todd. Oh, yeah, let me get one more scripture right there. <laughs> Psalms 112. In case y'all don't believe me yet. Here it is. Listen. Benefits of knowing your identity. Look at me. I'm walking around. I'm supposed to be sitting down, don't I? God might beat me up tonight. His descendants will be. This is, oh, this blesses me. This scripture is on my wall. I pray this every morning. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house. And what? His righteousness endures. How long, Jazz? Wait a minute. I can't live forever. So what is that? What is he saying? He's saying that's transferable, Lord. He said, because you, 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 you create a culture of blessings. You create a culture where the conversation is in your house. Like, listen, we become who God says we are because that's where the blessings are. That, that's where the protection are. That's where the provision is. And so now it becomes, this becomes normalized in my house. And it starts with you knowing who you are. Am I making any sense? Y'all want that, right? Wealth and riches. Yeah, I know we're not supposed to talk about that since prosperity preaching killed everything. But if God said, I want what he wants me to have. I am not going to deny myself of anything that previous generations messed up. Did y'all hear that? back to this. So, we lack purpose. So why does it even matter? Purpose should have, should have shaped your character. A whole bunch of people did. Y'all stay with me. Don't you, This is good stuff. Listen. Your purpose, who you were chasing after, the person that you're supposed to be, should have been what chase, should have been what would shape your character. And you've been taught that character is, uh, represents the impressions that you make on people. So every time people think of me, they should think about me in the vein of who I was becoming. But because we did not know who we were, we have left all a variety of marks on people. 
as we've come through life trying on different personalities. Because here's the truth. If you don't know who you are, you don't know how to treat people. Let's take it another level so you can understand. You don't know who to show up as. Ain't nothing more uncomfortable when you think you know somebody. Then you meet them. Did y'all get that? Because I had plans and dreams and opportunities with who you presented. And now you're revealing who you really are. This has now shaken up my world. Not only shaking up my plans, it's shaking me up because now I'm questioning my judgment. And so when I start questioning my judgment, I start looking at everybody funny. Some of y'all mistreat everybody because one person. All men are dog know the one you chose. All women are trifling. No, no, no. The one you chose. You ain't really mad at us. You mad at you. And so to keep from confronting you and being cured, you decided to paint us all with a brush so that you can now normalize the fact you can't find nobody to be with. <laughs> See why y'all don't put the love offering baskets out no more. I ain't gonna get none, but that's all right. All right. <laughs> ah, well, what else? Let me hurry up because y'all running out of patience with me. The purpose of a thing, listen, the purpose of a thing is determined before it's created. The purpose of a thing is always determined before it is actually created. See, listen, if someone wanted to create a product, they would first determine what the product is supposed to do, right? You would determine, they would determine what the product, what problem the product is supposed to solve. They would find the necessary parts, pull the parts together in such a way that the new thing can function to solve the problem. Everything we got from this microphone to this table to this iPad comes from existing parts that who made? God. Man, they made a tree. God stuck the steel in the ground. There are existing parts already in the earth. And whenever we solve a problem, it is the assembly of those parts that makes the thing now function. So he cut a tree, pulled some steel out of the earth, combined them together, made me a table. Y'all see that? Same thing is true for you. When God got ready to make you Tory, he had a problem in mind. And so what you were supposed to do was created before the assembly took place. Are y'all with me? Watch this now. I need you to understand this. I need you to believe this. God has already provided you, Angie, with everything you need in you to be who he wants you to be. But like on many of the toys you're going to buy for your kids this Christmas, on the side of the box it says what? Assembly required. You got all the pieces. You got to put it together. 
This ain't something you can hire somebody else to do. And see, here's what's been happening to you your whole life. Life, God gave you all the pieces, but life has been trying to show you that you got them. Everything that you've gone through has been trying to get you to identify what you are made of and what you are made for. When you read the story about the Garden of Eden, God's introduction of himself to us, that wasn't just thrown in there. God is saying, this is the beginning of our life together. That's what he's saying, Jessica. He said, go back and read Genesis 1. He said, that's what it looks like when me and you finally meet each other. He said, when me and, we, me and you finally meet each other, you are chaos. You, 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 watch this. You, 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 you are just, you just confused. But get this. The only way that chaos can exist is if the parts are there. They just aren't assembled right. Because chaos is a picture of everything scattered. So everything you need is there. It's just that my life has caused me to be a little scattered. And I'm frustrated now because I can, I can feel that I've got the pieces of a life that I desire but I just can't seem to bring it all. So the first thing you see God doing when he shows up, he finds a situation that has now been scattered by an enemy that's been allowed to run free in the earth because he had already fallen to the earth. Ezekiel tells us that he was cast down like lightning. And so while he was here, he did everything he could to scatter things. Same thing happened to you. Before you begin to realize I was created with an intent, I went through my life allowing the enemy through various people and situations to take my good stuff and scatter it. As a child, you were lovable, so you went about trying to love everybody. But then you faced, you were faced with rejection, and now your ability to love seems a little bit scattered. Your ability to relate to people seems a little bit scattered. And the parts of you that God wants to use, you have now been using in the other kingdom. Some of you are gifted with gab, and so now you're proficient gossipers. When in reality, you're supposed to be proficient at teaching. But because you got another teacher before you got the teacher, he put you in a situation of being scattered and never fulfilled. God is saying, you've got everything you need. You just got to let me make you whole. See, you've been saying that for years and, and never even pictured it. For me to become whole, that means I already got the pieces, Trav. Am I making sense? <sighs> two more things and we can go home, okay? Can I give y'all two more? If I don't uncover, if I don't chase God, pull at God, like Jacob did, like I ain't going to let you go till you what? Bless me. I ain't going to let you go. I'm going to get on your nerves till you instruct me, till you tell me what my name is. My daddy called me Jacob, but something in me tells me I'm not a trickster. My daddy said I was going to be a supplanter all my days of my life. Daddy said I was going to be tripping folk up all the days of my life. But there's something on the inside of me been fighting what my earthly father said. So I'm not going to let you go because I begin to realize daddy just made me a body. He didn't create the person. So I need you to tell me. Because I don't want to be Bartimaeus. I don't want to be just known as the son of this. I don't want to just be known as what I came out of. I don't want to just be known by what my family did. I don't want to be known just by what somebody else did. I really want to leave my own mark. I really want to leave my own mark. I know I've come from some stuff, and, and the folks that I came from may not have gotten it right, but this one will. This one will. Something in me won't be quiet. Anybody got that going on? There's something in me that won't let me settle. Something in me that said, this ain't it, and this ain't me. So I'm going to grab you till you talk to me. 
I'll never discover. Watch this. I don't get this. If I don't chase you, I'll never discover what I do naturally. What did he say? Because this scripture right here used to frustrate me till, till, just, till, till just now, Jermaine. This scripture, I used to hear the scripture, and I'm like, I don't know about that. It says, uh, the gifts of God add no sorrow. Now, wait a minute now. Wait, now. wait, wait. I've been crying a lot for you, Jesus. He said, because you won't let me show you what you do naturally. See, I can get up here and I can do this. I study. But my flow is natural. I couldn't, because, and here's the thing. If I ever let whatever happens in my life, whatever happens with y'all, frustrate me to stop doing this, I'm going to stop standing in the place where I feel like myself. Pastor, why didn't you quit? Why didn't you fold up? Because I would have quit on me, and this is the place I feel the best. Now, once I walk away, life hits me again. But the moment that I get a chance to stand and let this flow happen, this is what God meets me. This is what God meets me. This is what I do naturally. See, some of you still, watch this. Some of you are still operating under, the, under Adam's curse. Adam's curse. Because watch this. Because Adam didn't let God finish teaching him what his identity was. God turned around and said, listen, for the rest of your days, you got to do this by the sweat of your brow. Some of you mad because you're still struggling to get by. God says, because you're doing it as an imposter. So you can't even get your full worth. Man, I just want to make some more money. We're paying the person who shows up. Ooh. Become the person of undeniable value. I'm just waiting for the Lord to open up. No, 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 no. You have to rock these principles, walk these principles, become who he calls you. That's where the recompense comes. This, out, this, 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 this identity changes your outlook on life, how you look out at life. Because now I can begin to see where I fit in. You know what will happen when you... <laughs> You know what scripture says? You'll be overtaken by blessings. Anybody still waiting on that? What happens when you discover who you are, then you get your eyes open, body Davis. And you stop seeing men as trees, something just to cut down. Because I can cut people down to feel good. Or I can build them up because I know what I'm doing. What happens, Christine, is this. When my eyes are open, I see the endless opportunities. Now, now I go to another frustration. Because I, now I'm so blessed, I don't know where to start. Say, that's so far into y'all, y'all can't even give me an amen. Because you've been reduced to begging. I just want the mercies of people. Just, I'm hoping that somebody gives me some scraps. I just hope somebody think about me. I just want a cabin in the corner. When Jesus says, in my father's house, there are many cabins. Is that, in some, is that the message Bible or something? In my father's house, there are many why are you asking for a cabin? I just want to get in. No, 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 no. I don't want to just get in. I want to kick the gates open. Ha! Your boy here. See, see, some of y'all can't handle that. Yeah. Uh, pastor being arrogant, no. Pastor being a son. Because as a son, Jazz, he says, come to me with, what did the scripture say? Come before me with 
boldly. Most of us come in trying to peek behind somebody. Let me just see if I can get in with you. But if I know who I am, I know where I belong. If Satan still come to meetings, why am I acting like I don't deserve to be in God's presence? When I know who I am, I know what I can ask for. Did I make any sense? I'm going to stop there. We'll come back. Tina, put the takeaway up for me. Why does it even matter? Does it matter? I've been asking for stuff and heaven doesn't recognize me. I've been asking for stuff because I saw somebody else with it. That ain't even mine. Listen. <laughs> Tina, take it back down. These jokers are going to pay me some attention. Why do you think, if, if you heard me correctly, well, I'm going to show you all how smart you are. If you heard me correctly, why does God get upset with you coveting? Say again. Say it, Jazz. It's not yours. You're like, well, I'm not supposed to cover. I'm not supposed to be envious. I'm not supposed to be jealous of somebody else. And you never ask why. You're like, I'm just not, okay. Man, that looked good, man. But I can't, oh, I can't, I can't want that. God is saying, quit wasting time with this. I got you. I'm no respecter person. I no. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, I got this. This is different. I, I first said, I got you. Listen to what I just heard. No, he said, I got yours. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. This is what just dropped in my spirit. Why couldn't David wear Saul's stuff? wasn't. That's not yours. You can do the same thing he does as you. But it looked like I should be putting on all this armor. It looked like I should go back to school. It looked like I got to take care of this. It looks like my credit is bothering me. It looks like my criminal record is going to hold me up. Listen, God says, I got Yours. How many more years you're going to lose watching somebody else's stuff? As if I haven't already assigned eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what the Lord has prepared for those who love him. He said, I made your stuff before I made you. And when you become who you should be, it's just like opening up my phone, put it in front of my face. It recognizes me. And it opens me up. Heaven says, be ye conformed so that you're recognizable. Then I'll open up a window of heaven. You can put it back to me. You know what? You know, as a pastor, you know what I want more than anything? I appreciate the love gifts and I appreciate all that. Thank y'all so much. Y'all are so kind and sweet toward me. But you know what I want before I leave this earth? To meet you. I want to see you. Not, not, not who you are today. But mm. No, I want you. The one God made. The one that God thought was so incredible that he said, prepare me about it. I'm going to go die to give her another shot at finding who I made. 
That's who I want to meet. That's the fella I want to hang out with. That's the guy I want to talk to. I, I, I want to see you in your, in, your, in your holy swagger. Well, you ain't anxious for nothing no more. Wouldn't that be awesome? For your kids to go, I don't need no hero on TV. My hero in the next room. Take away. Your purpose, identity matters because one, it frees you from the bondage of what you came out of. Yes. Two, it allows you to establish your worth with self the world, and ultimately God. That's a good thing. It guides you in who you should connect with relationally. This looks like a whole person, don't it? And four, shows you what you've been made to do, which removes your inner struggles and gives you a greater outlook on life. Simply put, it restores your joy. I should have said this to you earlier about the struggle. Listen, let me say this before I let you go. When you find out who you are, I don't want to mislead you and make you think that you won't have outside resistance. You got an enemy who's determined to come against you, your development. But here's the part you need to be excited about. You won't have internal resistance. Because right now, for the majority of us, the enemy doesn't have to fight us. He just sits back and watch us fight. You can't even get to him because you're still fighting you. But God settles you with peace. The peace of knowing who I am. Tina and I are going to work on a little peace. We're going to show you in just a little bit that, that, that um, I, I get to. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to bless you. That's what I need you to understand. Let me just say this. Several times throughout your life, your world is going to crumble around you. Y'all hear me? But your recovery is determined by the fact that you don't let your identity crumble with it. No matter how crazy your world gets, you still have to stand ten toes down and look in the mirror. I still know who I am. If you lose you, every time your world goes crazy, But I'm telling you as a personal testimony, when your world collapses, and it will many times, if you can hold on to you, recovery, it's coming, and when it does, it exceeds what you lost. Come on, stand to your feet. Does it matter to you? Does purpose matter to you? I hope so. Grab God, don't let him go. Tell me who I am. What Bartimaeus said, you know, can I just, can I have my sight again? So he wasn't really born that way. He became that way. You weren't born this way. You became this way. What did we say two Sundays ago? Do it again. Do it again. Just bow your heads for me. Believers begin to pray. God snatched three back this morning, and I'm grateful. I want to make sure we didn't miss anybody. The only way out of your mess is to give God a yes, even if it's a shaky yes, even if it's a yes with a whole bunch of questions. 
find the strength to say, I need you, Jesus. I need you. If you're in here and you're not sure if you're saved and you want to be saved, I'm not going to ask you to come down here to me. I'm not going to make a scene, none of that. Eyes are closed so nobody's looking. You know, like, man, I'm lost. I'm confused. I need I need the blueprint for my life. I need to know who I am. Why was I made? I, I need my life to make sense. And I know who can do that. I know who can do that. But you got to say yes to it. If you're ready to give your life to Christ, all you got to do is put your hand in the air for just a couple seconds. Or you can pull it back down. God bless you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And he added to them, day by day, those who were being saved. Is there another? We are so excited for you, God. So come on. Let's not delay, let's not delay this moment. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say this prayer with you. We're going to say it because we love you and don't want you to be by yourself. But you're going to say it because your life's about to shift. Repeat after me. Say, Father, thank you for Jesus. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. I believe in my heart. You raised him from the dead. According to the Bible, if I can confess and if I can believe, it makes me righteous and it makes me saved. God, I'm confessing. God, I'm believing. And I can say with confidence, I'm yours now. I'm saved. Holy Spirit, I'm safe now. You can come live with me. Live in me. Walk alongside me. Just teach me your ways. Please, Lord, reveal to me my identity. And I will spend the rest of my days becoming who you need me to be. I'm home. In Jesus' name, somebody shout the rafters off by screaming, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep adding, Lord. We stand in your word. Through our fellowship, through our devotion, to our pushing to be of one mind on one accord. You promised us you'd give us favor and you promised you'd add to us. We're going to do our part knowing you will do yours. Keep these people that I love so dearly and so deeply. Not that we just want long days, but we want time to repay you. We want time to reach loved ones. We want time for the great commission. We want to see the people we love say yes to you. Give us days for that. We love you. We love you. We love you. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, I do pray. CYM, I absolutely adore you. Amen.